The time has come, we are going to talk about some paints. My favorite. Since I started my YouTube channel like years ago actually, people have been asking me tons of questions about paint. Most common one is, how do I get started? What kind of paint do I use? And when I say the most common, I mean one of thousands. So I thought to myself, self? What? Self. I am thinking that we should do a series of videos based on people's questions, answering them, and getting them prepared for Halloween in the middle of July slash August. Self, it is still 90 degrees out. It's like the middle of Halloween. Yes! And here we are. And you know what? On top of wanting to help you guys get started in what I do, I see a lot of questionable things on the internet, and I'd like to make a series to make sure that you guys don't die. One subject at a time, Professor Lex. Yes, ma'am. Can I get in trouble for calling myself a professor? Disclaimer, I am not a professor. So in today's video, I figured that I'd go over paint that you can get started with and then kind of where to go from there. So it might be kind of a decently lengthy video because let's admit it, I don't ever stop talking. That's a problem. Now you may be wondering, Professor Lex, not a professor. If you're wanting to get into face painting or do the things that I do, create monsters, creatures, characters, etc., I always recommend that you start out using a water activated face paint, which is what I will be going over first. There are two types of water activated face paint that I will be going over, which is glycerin and wax. Water activated paint means that it literally is activated with water. So for example, I'm gonna show you guys Pro Paint by Graftobian. Ta da! And this is Fix Plus from Mac but it could also be water. Oh, here's my water bottle. No, it's not. That's cleaner. Okay, Fix Plus from Mac or water. Once you spray it, the paint will then become activated. Without water, the paint is dry. You might get a little residue on your fingers, but you're not really getting any kind of useful anything. Sometimes I'll use it like that for shading, but anyway. Water activated glycerin based paints are what I use pretty much the entirety of my channel. This includes brands like Pro Paint from Graftobi and Paradise Paint from Mayron. Fab. I'm pretty sure Krylon Aquacolor is also glycerin based, but mainly what you'll see on this channel is Graftobian Pro Paint and Mayron Paradise Paint. Not only do I use these things like all the time, but it's also really good to start out with. Reason being, these babies come right off right when you get in the shower or your model gets in the shower. Someone is getting in the shower. Probably not together. They don't really stain that bad. Now that particularly goes according to the company that you use. I have used paints where I have been like super stained, not for more than a day, but you definitely don't want to go out looking like a Smurf. The Graftobian Pro Paints, I haven't really found to have stained me yet, at least off the top of my head, not a color that I can think of. The Mayron Paradise Paints, I recall that the blue did stain a little bit, but nothing like drastic. When I very first started body painting, I started out with these MAC Chroma Cakes. I'm not 100% sure if they're glycerin based or not. I really don't know much about them. All I know is that it just stains so bad. Great pigment, horrible avatar looking thing the next day. As I say about it staining, it just stained my thumb. Anyways, these two brands are easy to remove. So if you mess up, you're stressing out, you can take it right off. In comparison to the other water activated paint, which is wax based, these dry slower than that. So you have more time to blend, more time to just generally shade in general. They don't take a long time to dry, but enough time where you can still work with them for eh, a good amount of time. With these paints, actually with most paints I'm gonna be going over in this video, you don't have to set them. So if you're a first time face painter, these are gonna be simple. Can you set them? Sure. Will they help you? Probably not. Not really. Like, no. Now because these are water activated, let's say you're going to a concert, okay? And it's 110 degrees outside and you're sweating like you're dying. Yeah, these are gonna run. But on the other hand, I've also worn these to Comic-Con before and I've been just fine. But I also wasn't having beads of sweat roll down. I think that's what really comes into play with these things coming off, is it depends how much you are going to be sweating. You can also apply a sealer over it for safe for bodies, safe for skin, not like a car sealant. There was a product called Barrier Spray, which really does help it last longer, but overall, I didn't really need it throughout the day. I was fine. Just don't jump in a pool or get caught in a rainstorm. With recommending these for starting out, I also looked up on the Graftobian website just to double check that they are $12.99, so they're $13. Outside of YouTube, I do paint full bodies, so I can tell you this pretty much paints an entire body. If you are just starting out and you're just painting faces, like I have a whole drawer full of paints, and I like feel like I almost never go through paint, even with as many tutorials and as many paintings as I do. On a completely separate note, I always get the question of, what is the cheapest face paint that you can use to start out with? 
Well, when you're just starting out, I will always recommend that you just get the primary colors in black and white. So you're gonna wanna get red, blue, yellow, black, and white. Reason being, you can make any color out of those three colors, and then all you need is black to make it darker and white to make it lighter. As I'm going over a bunch of different paints, the reason I recommend these paints specifically is not only for all the reasons that I literally just listed throughout this video so far, but because if you go out and you get a cheaper brand of paint, like from Walmart, it's not gonna be the same type of paint. It's not gonna be the same really anything. And then when you go to use it, you might end up hating it, never wanting to pick up another makeup brush, never wanting to try face painting again, and just completely hating everything. I don't want you to hate it, I want you to create. So when it comes to starting out, having the right paint really does make a difference because it could be a difference between really not liking it because it's gonna turn out streaky and patchy or maybe burn your eyelids off, which happened to me the first time I used paint from the store that I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, I didn't burn my eyelids off, but it definitely did sting and absolutely falling in love with a brand new hobby. Now the other half of water activated paint would be wax based paint. From here on out, the rest of the video is totally up to you if you want to add to your collection after purchasing that. This wax base is also water activated, so that means it is activated with water, and if not, it is completely dry. This is blue from the chroma cake. Wax based paints are paints like Wolf, Chameleon, and Tag, and a couple others. As far as wax base, the only wax base I really actually use is from Wolf Effects, and as you can see, it becomes very ugly after you use it for a while. I don't know why I can't use it evenly. You can like literally see every little crevice that apparently I continuously dip my brush in. Don't know why. That's, that's my mark of painting. It's how you know it's mine. There's only a couple differences between the wax and the glycerin base paint. Mainly a lot of face and body painters use the wax base paint for line work. Anything involving lines. Outlines design line. The wax base, just from personal experience, feels pretty thick. Not like thick on your skin when you're just using it for lines, but if you wanted to actually like do a full like black leather jacket, let's say, it's gonna feel a lot heavier than the glycerin based paint. So when I am using wax based body paint, I pretty much am just using it for lines. The wax based body paint is gonna get you a smoother, longer, I guess, line than the glycerin would. It's cleaner of a line. Wax base also dries a lot faster, like significantly faster. Probably not the best thing to blend with. I feel like, yeah, you can add this to your face painting collection right away, like, why not? And you can definitely use these to paint with more than just lines, but really, I think the most use you're gonna get is when you're outlining stuff. You can also apply both water-activated paints with a brush or with a sponge. Going away from water-activated paints, we're done with that. We're now going to go into the mystical, magical land of alcohol-activated paints. Which actually, just like water-activated paints, there's also like airbrush versions of pretty much everything, but in general, this video we're going over like cake-type form of paint. In everything I'm about to be referencing, in terms of the alcohol-based face paint, I'm only referring to the cake face paint and not about anything in an airbrush or anything of that form. We are strictly discussing this within this video. Now, for people who have never body painted before, I have not a single clue like where people are even researching about the alcohol-based paint for face that's not an airbrush form. But that's okay. A lot of times, people will put the logic together of alcohol-activated paint will not come off in water, which means it won't come off with sweat, it won't come off in concerts, it won't come off in the heat, let's put it all over our whole body. No. A lot of times people will see this palette and think that all of these colors are gonna be great for their body. Nothing is coming out because it's alcohol activated. Fun story, when I first got this, I had no idea what that even meant. Like I got this years ago and I was like, I think my paint is not good. I think it's dried out. No, it's totally not that at all. These types of paint are meant to be like for effects, bruises, cuts, things of that nature. They're not meant to be like a face paint. They're not meant to be like a character out of this palette. Alcohol activated makeup, yes, it completely withstands water, but it only comes off with alcohol or a special kind of remover, but honestly, alcohol is your best bet. Additionally, these palettes are really cool because it makes it kind of look like it's underneath your skin. It's the best way I can explain it. These are very translucent as long as you use enough alcohol with them. So when you're trying to make something such as a vein or a bruise and you want to actually make it look realistic, people also use these on set to create tattoos. Everything that is 
under your skin. In order to activate these, not only do you need alcohol, you need 99% isopropyl alcohol. Good luck finding that. You can find it at Ace Hardware. Maybe not all the stores, but definitely one of them. I was able to find it by like the medical stuff in some stores for a while, but not really so much anymore. 75% won't work, 80% won't work, you need 99%. Which also means that 97 will not work. Do you think this is a game? You can't find this. Luckily though, Skin Illustrator also does make an activator in case you want to just go ahead and buy that. Additionally, these palettes cost $70 to $80 per palette. But on the flip side, if you're actually using these for what they're made for, these rock. Do you need them in your kit as a face painter? Probably not. These guys are great for people who want to get into effects or are existingly doing effects. I guarantee you pretty much every effects artist will have at least one of these in their kit. Which in the coming videos, let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to go over all these palettes. There's many. There's the effects, there's Necromania, there's the original Skin Illustrator. So let me know if you guys want me to go over these alcohol-based paints and what I could show you how to use them. These are not something that you could just hop in the shower and remove. Within these palettes, you also don't really get that much because they're not meant to cover like a body. It's meant to do like a vein. When applying these to the skin, they dry very, very fast. As soon as the alcohol evaporates, whoosh, dry. And these paints are also very translucent. This is what it actually looks like when you activate the paint. Now, the more alcohol you add, the more translucent it's gonna be. The less alcohol you add, the more opaque it's going to be. Let me just close this because I'm dying. I don't have the windows open. When you're working with alcohol activated makeup, please make sure you're in a well ventilated area, have the windows open, you're outside, something of that nature because just the pure smell of that alcohol is gonna make you Moving on to cream makeup. Now, if it's Halloween, if it's not Halloween, do what you want, but if you're looking to make a bruise or something of that nature, cream makeup is awesome. You guys will see a lot of these wheels around. It takes a while for cream makeup to dry, but it does dry eventually. And you can also set it with translucent powder. You guys will see these wheels around, and this one particularly is from Graftobian, and it's called Severe Trauma. Now, I don't think I have one around. Wait, maybe I do. No, I don't. You guys can use a stippling sponge, which is going to be your best bet for these cream type makeups. You're not really going to want to use like a brush or anything. It's going to kind of defeat the purpose of it. You can use these different colors to create bruises on the skin. I take that back. You could also use a stippling brush that can make some pretty cool effects too. But cream based makeup is a lot different than water activated or alcohol. Actually, these are all really different from each other. In my personal opinion, I'd say cream makeup is not the most comfortable when you first apply it, but once it dries, it feels fine. You can feel it on your skin, but it's not bad. You guys will also commonly see cream makeup being used on things like bald caps or over latex appliances. It's thick, creamy, and you don't need anything to activate these. These are what you think of more than likely when you think of body paint. And you could totally cover a whole face in cream paint if you want, but for me personally, I like the water activated paints for when I'm doing my creatures, characters, etc. I would say cream face paint is not a bad thing to start out with either. Cream face paint is good for Halloween as long as you're not trying to get like super intricate details or like covering a body. And finally, the last one I'm going to go over, which I do not even own, is grease paint because it's gross. It's definitely used. It's used mostly in like theater because it's just, it's on your face. It's all over your face. Anybody who's been in theater, you can relate to this moment we're having. Grease paint does not dry. You can set it with powder though, which makes it waterproof. And when you go to take it off, it's an adventure. It's strong against sweat, but you don't want to go and scratch it even though you're gonna feel like you really have to. Grease paints are not something I recommend, but like I said, if you're in theater, dance, clowns, they use it all the time. You also shouldn't apply it into a brush. Just use a sponge and just... <laughs> so I'm an oily skin type though, so it's like... <laughs> I'm also gonna be putting a poll in one of these corners. Make sure you click the little I in the corner for information. And take a vote for what you guys want to see next. I'm hoping to get through a bunch of these because I really want you guys to actually know what you are doing and succeed. Mainly, I don't want you to hurt yourself this Halloween. I see a lot of questionable things on the internet. They may be answered right away if they're in relation to this video and it's something I haven't answered for you guys, or they might be answered in a future video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.